So to go ahead and get started, my name is Richie Russell. I'm director at the director of Sanford Harmony. And Sanford Harmony is a social emotional learning program that's Castle Select. And it's provided at absolutely no cost to schools. That's the materials, the trainings, everything. So that you can go ahead and have a program to begin using in your schools to um, start having those con kinds of conversations around social emotional learning with your kids and your teachers and your staff. It's a pre-K through sixth grade program as well. I'll go into more details um, with it, about it at the end, but we'll go ahead and just kind of talk more about what the real mission of Sanford Harmony is, and that's building healthy relationships. And that's really what our program is about. We believe that we are all social and emotional beings, and as such, part of that is just how we develop healthy relationships to really foster those kinds of relationships uh, to make sure they're healthy and strong. One of our strategies in Sanford Harmony is buddy up. And so it looks like we have an even number, perfect. So we'll go ahead and buddy up. And then um, throughout this, we'll kind of have opportunities for you to go ahead and discuss and um, go ahead and buddy up. So um, with your buddy, if you want to go ahead and discuss this first prompt that's on the screen, uh, why are relationships important? All right, I'll go ahead and bring you back. I know it's kind of a simple question, but there's also a hundred different ways we could probably go ahead and answer this and um, probably expand on it, but I'd love to first before we get started here from some of you. Since we do have a small group, I don't usually do this, but I'd just love to have everyone go around and just introduce themselves. So please just share your name and then um, what your role is, if you're at a school or administrator, and then also um, where you live, because not everyone may be here. So uh, Richie Russell, director of Sanford Harmony, and I live in San Diego, California. I'm Linda Oshita. I'm actually with the University of Hawaii. Um, but I'm also, I think, Sanford Harmony's newest member, uh, and I live here in Honolulu. I'm Melissa Schlanger. I'm the Vice President for Practice at Castle, and I live in Chicago. I'm Mark Rippold. I'm not an educator, but my family are all educators, so I understand the angle that I live here now in Honolulu. I'm Michelle Robinson. I work with Sanford Harmony as the National Director of Implementation and Training, and I live in Rancho Mirage, California. Um, I'm Betty Skiles. I teach at the University Lab School right oh, across the street. Yes. Um, and um, I'm a science teacher, but I'm also the SEL coordinator. It's very mm. near and dear to my heart. So. And what, oh, hi, everyone. I'm Kaholo Daguman. And right now, I'm doing consulting for some charter schools on the Big Island. Mm. Where I'm from. OK, very nice. And what grades are at your school? We have K through 12. K through 12, OK. Had you heard of Sanford Harmony before? I had, well, I saw him over the summer. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm part good. of the cohort, the Pillars of Peace. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. yeah, we're a part of that. Okay, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. All these connections, right? <laughs> See? Relationships. And if we just sat here. <laughs> there, we answered the question. <laughs> if, we just, if we just sat here and never had a conversation and turned to the person next to us, these kinds of opportunities and connections wouldn't happen. Um, and so we really believe in those quick connections. And so I want to hear from you why you think relationships are important. I'll start. Mm -hmm. Well, what I was telling Betty, the first thing that came to my mind was the three R's, rigor, relevance, relationships. And that relationship part, if the teacher does not have good relationship with the kids, forget it. The kid has already checked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why? Like why, if, they, if it's not there, they check out, but why do they check out? You know, it's that whole feeling of being wanted and being mm. liked. You know, a lot of kids want to be liked. You know, I mean, they want to have friends, and all mm -hmm. that, including the teacher. Yeah. That's what it is. Nice. Any else? I can go, because um, I jumped off of that. So the, the teacher relationship is a student relationship is important, but then when you move into middle and high school, their peer relationships mm -hmm. become the most important, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, they think, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, it might be all that matters mm -hmm. at that point, right? right? In order for us to Relate. connect with them. Yeah. 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 One more? Well, we 
were kind of talking about how I think the basis of being human is kind of developing these relationships with other people. I mean, this is really kind of what, being, we're social creatures, and so as a result, uh, relationships kind of are, th are at the crux of who we are, what we do, and kind of how we operate, so. I often think of um, the uh, movie Castaway, you know, with yeah. Tom Hanks, he's on the island, he's stranded, and he's all alone, and he creates this fictitious character, Wilson, because he needs, he has that, that need for a relationship, right? Um, so that's always a kind of fun example to think about, just our, our to your point, the innate um, need for relationships. So we'll do a quick connection. Um, these are, come from one of these uh, buddy up quick connection cards from Sanford Harmony, but a uh, question, what accomplishment has made you proud and what did you do to celebrate it? So go ahead and take a moment to think and then turn to your buddy again and go ahead and share with them. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking through this one earlier and I was like, I could think of something, an accomplishment that made me proud, but I don't remember celebrating it and just like how important that piece is, but we often neglect. Um, I think those of us that are parents, I look at that and I'm like, <laughs> wow, I feel like we do a lot of celebrating of our children's yes. accomplishments, you know, going out for something because of a mm -hmm. sports win or a mm -hmm. birthday celebration, but I, it's hard to think about like, well, wait a minute, when do we celebrate ourselves? Mm. Now I say that here in Hawaii, without them, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have too bad. <laughs> well, we'll go ahead and move to, there's a quick activity. So in this, in the quick connection cards, there's conversations, there's also collaborations. And so this is one of the collaborations, but, and I don't have paper, I apologize, but go ahead and visualize in your mind a trunk. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do a quick whip around and say the first thing that you visualized that came to mind. An elephant's trunk. Okay, <laughs> same? Yep. Tree trunk. Tree trunk. Elephant. Uh, the trunk you put stuff in back in the day with leather Suitcase and metal covers. Oh, I thought of that too later. Bathing suit. A bathing suit trunk, okay. <laughs> Appropriate. So why, what do you think influenced that thought to come to your mind? Any of you? I wanted my answer to be tree, but it, it really was an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it to be tree. I thought that was a much better answer. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why. No, yeah. No idea. yeah. Uh, well, um, last night I walked through the international marketplace, yeah. and they've done a major overhaul at that place. It was um, a rather um, getting kind of seedy several years ago, and um, they've really refurbished and made it really nice. And the beautiful thing about that place is that they saved the banyan trees. Mm. And when I walked through there, I could not help but just honor it last night and just standing there and look at it. And they did, they designed the architecture around the tree. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Yeah, where is that? That's cool. International Marketplace in the heart of Waikiki. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Have to visit it. Yeah. Pardon me? Yeah. We'll have to visit it. Okay. So, um, Lots of different potential answers, right? And um, lots of different ways or different reasons w that maybe one answer came to our mind first before another one. Um, and it's interesting, Melissa, you share about, well, I wanted my answer to be this, but this was the one that came to my mind. I think we often do that. Um, and often we, we act, we behave, we um, interact with people and develop relationships in certain ways that sometimes we're even unaware of why or, or um, not really mindful of what we're really um, kind of contributing in that way. And so what I'd like to do during this session is just kind of slow things down, take a step back, reflect, go through the process, think about our identity, our experiences, what um, kind of impact we want to have, and how that kind of um, plays out with the relationships in our lives. So um, just really about knowing your path toward impact and impact in those relationships. 
So kind of a three-step process I see to this, the first piece being your identity and your experiences. What are those kind of, of seeds that have been innate or um, part of you? Um, and then how have those grown and how have those influenced you um, and the impact that you want to make? And then the next step, what are the opportunities that you have available to really make that impact really flourish and come into fruition? So that's the, the process, the three-step process that we'll be going through. So when we talk about identity and experiences, I like this little graph here. It's a little small, but I'll try and read through it and um, break it down. We really have at our core is our personal attributes, our personal characteristics, um, your personal identity. I'm sure many of you have done those personality surveys just to kind of know more about who you are at your core. Um, and then there are our identity markers, sexual orientation, race, culture, class, religion, gender, to name a few. Um, and the interesting thing about identity markers is that some are visible and some are invisible. Um, and they all can kind of play a role in how we uh, interact with others as well. Um, and then a third piece is the context. So there's family background, sociocultural conditions, your current experiences. Um, I think I was talking to Michelle earlier about this, your school environment. That's part of your context that you grow up in and experience. Um, career decisions and life planning. And all of those pieces kind of come together and influence um, to make you, you. Um, and so these, without a doubt, shape us. I think the one that I want to really kind of take a, a step into um, for a second is this context piece, because I think that one is the probably one that has um, just kind of a, a lot of variability to it um, and is kind of more nebulous and hard to understand and really grasp um, all the different pieces that may play into it. So I, ha I like these three different kinds of profiles that I'm going to go through. And um, I kind of you know, realized these few different profiles when um, interviewing people for various kinds of roles. And I would always ask them, why do you want to do whatever the job was? Be a principal, be a mentor teacher, be a teacher, um, or whatever it may be. And I kind of noticed a trend that there's three kind of common responses. The first, there are the refiners. These are the people who have seen it and they've seen it done well. So they um, have seen the path, the path has been previously made, they experience that path and they know it, and they want to go ahead and make that path um, better and, and improve it for others as well. So they're really refining that path. And so when asking somebody if they want to be, let's say, a mentor teacher or something, they may say, um, and they're ask, answering the question why specifically they want to be a mentor teacher, they may say, oh, well, I had this really great mentor teacher, and she just really influenced me and in who I want to become, and I want to be that kind of mentor teacher for other people, right? You've heard that kind of response from people about what's motivating them, what's driving them to do something. Um, a, a refiner skilled, and, and experienced, um, maybe hesitant to change or new ideas. Um, one caveat before I go any further, with these three profiles, there are several other profiles. I'm just kind of highlighting three specific ones um, because there's somebody who can go through that experience, have a great model example, and then not have that kind of, those kinds of characteristics. Um, but, um, but I want to highlight these three in this, ex in this case. It's like anything with social science, right? It's just like, well, this is like a broad description of some general generalities. But the second is the drivers. These are the people who have seen it, but they've seen it done poorly. So this is a person who has maybe had a, a bad model, a, a poor example in their life. And despite those obstacles, they've overcome it. Um, and they're really driven and passionate and motivated to um, um, get to a certain goal, get to a certain place, despite some of the barriers that have been set before them. 
And so they uh, are really desiring to improve the path so that others who, can, who have experienced those kinds of challenges can come behind them and have a, a clearer path forward. Um, highly motivated, open to feedback, may need support with some best practices because they, again, haven't had that kind of model in the past. Then the last there are the innovators. These are those who haven't seen it. They, it's not out there. But they see the, the, a vision, they're visionary of the need and want to meet that need. So they go ahead and create it, um, whatever that may be. Um, so they are identifying the need based on their ingenuity, their creativity, uh, motivated by this imagined potential of something that could be. Um, very creative and solutions oriented, um, may struggle with set structures though as they are more um, kind of open about how they want, might want to move forward. So these are just a few profiles I like to kind of think about and um, experience and, and think about our own experiences and the context of the lives we've lived and how that shaped us and how we approach different um, our work, our life, our relationships. And so um, there's, again, no doubt that our identity and experiences have a profound impact on our lives and our worldview and our relationships. So I told you we we're going to get a little intimate and share. So here's a picture of me. I'm the little one in red down there. Um, but a bit about my identity and experiences and the context within I, which I grew up. I grew up in poverty um, and I was physically and verbally abused and experienced homelessness as a child as well and moved over 18 times um, before graduating high school. On top of that, I was homeschooled. So I had very religious parents and they um, wanted to provide a very um, prescribed set of what um, my experiences in the world were going to be. And so, um, kind of my context, homeschooled and homeless. And um, that has had a profound uh, impact on me, um, became kind of more that driver personality there, despite the obstacles wanting to, you know, see myself, um, you know, thinking of the ruler training, like seeing your best self and, and where, where that is and how you get there. Um, and was the first in my family to attend college and um, wanted to dedicate my life to education and, and public education, became a teacher. Um, very clear, I think, you could probably say, the different experiences I had and how that impacted me and what I ended up choosing to do. Um, and now with Sanford Harmony be being involved in this organization, um, it's so clear to me how you can get an education, you can work hard, but if you don't have the relationships in your life, then you're, you're really probably, especially coming from poverty, not going to be able to really get that step ahead um, to get yourself out of poverty. Um, and I firmly believe that there's research uh, around it with Ruby Payne's framework for understanding poverty. There's different types of um, wealth that you can have in your life. Um, physical or monetary wealth is one, but relationships is another. And if you have that ability to tap into those relationships and build those healthy relationships, then it's a way to, um, again, overcome other types of poverty. So that was a, a bit about me, but I would like to hear from you um, and thinking again back to this chart about your core, your identity markers, and then also the context, um, what has shaped you? What are one or two of those key kind of experiences or traits or identity markers that really have made you who you are and influenced the relationships that you have? So I'm going to stop talking because that was a while of talking and let you turn to your buddy, buddy up and share with them one or two of those traits that really have impacted you and the relationships that you have. All right, I'll go ahead and bring you back. All right. 
I'd love to hear a bit about what you all shared uh, about your own identity and experiences and how that's shaped you. We can move this. Who would like to share? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know, when, when I saw your profile up there, too, everything was the same for me, oh. mm. except to the 18, moving 18 times and the, the homeless. And um, I was telling Betty here, I just, says, um, I went to private school th during my whole, and I think that became the driver, the driving force for me. Hmm. Thanks for sharing. You know, I'll share too. I was saying um, to Linda that um, I also went to private school on a scholarship and so was sort of inside feeling a little bit like an outsider mm -hmm. and hiding it, you know. Mm -hmm. but, um, but then realizing as an adult just how advantaged the students at this school um, were relative to the just general population and just it sort of informed the career path I went on about really trying to dedicate my life to public education as, um, as a product of private education, <laughs> sort of saying like, hey, everyone deserves this, mm -hmm. um, and trying to create public education that has that's high quality and inclusive, and um, you know, especially in large urban districts where mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time focused on trying to help those districts think through the challenges that they have and how to achieve that high quality education for those kids. Nice. Did you mean that from college, or did you mean um, like the private school? Did you go to private school all through all elementary, through all the way through, and all then got a scholarship as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I, but I, and then I went into teaching. Yeah. And then, um, and then into education on the other side. Yeah. So that was a celebration. <laughs> 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 Um, interesting in that kind of experience where you feel like you're on the inside but an outsider. It's kind of, a, again, one of those visible versus invisible identity markers or contexts that people don't really maybe always think about or see. And um, I think you said you kind of wanted to hide it, like you just kind well, of I think blend. That, we were talking about the importance of like how you perceive yourself mm -hmm. and you know I had a job after school that would allow me to like purchase the same kind of clothes that my, mm -hmm. you know, so I was hiding it to fit mm -hmm. in at school, but I would never wear that plaid skirt to my after school job, mm -hmm. right, where I like was a cashier at a drugstore with people who that was like their career and mm -hmm. I was like this. 16-year-old in a plaid skirt. So I, I was trying to hide that mm, from them. Right. But they didn't perceive me as this wealthy kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, I think you're constantly trying to figure out how do I fit in here? How, how can I be perceived um, so that I'm part of this group? Yeah. Right? That sense I was just going to say. That we yep. talked about that's such a driver. You just want to fit in and be a part of a group and feel like you're, you know, sense of belonging. Because if we're different than our, those in our setting, then we feel like, what, we're going to be judged or maybe ostracized or left or out. Or left out. Mm -hmm. And so think about even just the emotional labor mm -hmm. of even that. Um, or, you know, if you have um, visible ones like race or um, gender, right? Those, those kinds of, you know, challenges um, and the emotional labor that goes into that because you're constantly feeling that. Well, how are people perceiving me in this group? Am I safe? Um, a question that I often like to ask around this is, like, what is the identity marker, your identity marker, that is most, like, um, like top of mind to you? Right? Like, like, when you walk into a room, like, what is something that you're thinking like right away about when, regarding your identity? And if you don't ever have to think that, then there, you know, maybe there's some privilege there, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if anyone wants to share or 
um, think about that. Different times when you feel maybe like you're different or because of who you are, your identity, you may not feel safe in this environment. I wonder if some of those things could make you feel safe or confident. Mm. Like I think yeah. maybe the other way. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of those things about you that is outwardly, whatever they may be. It may be one physical characteristic. It may be something you know about yourself. But I think it all can also go the other way to give mm. you confidence. Yeah. Right? I really liked your emotional labor. Yeah, but that's a good term. <laughs> emotional labor. That's, mm -hmm. <laughs> He's writing a story. He doesn't want to tell you what happened. He's writing a story. <laughs> that was a really cool term. <laughs> that makes me think of, uh, because I've started doing work with mindfulness mm -hmm. years ago, and you're stripping that identity away if you're really getting into the core of mindfulness. And you don't have to be anything that you don't want to be. I, I don't have to identify with, um, it's a choice. Right, it's a choice. I don't have to identify if I was poor, or if I was rich, or I don't have to identify. You know what I mean? Like mm. some things you can't. I can't take away that I'm a woman, mm -hmm. but I don't make it a, a forefront like defining. Does it define you? No. Right. I, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, yes, but no. Right. Yes. <laughs> That's where you're going, right? That yes. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. Right. Or right. limit you. Right. 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 Exactly. It doesn't limit, limit you. you. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Nice. That's good. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, and I think if we can, I think. <laughs> You know, if we can get to a place where people feel like diversity is celebrated and they are included regardless of that, then that's really the eliminating of the barriers or the, the fears that people may have about who they are in different environments. And um, so that's really the set, that's really what we want to do in our, in our schools, in our classrooms, is ensure that you know, what are our practices? What are we doing to make sure that students, regardless of um, race, sexual orientation, culture, class, religion, feel welcome, included, and that their differences are also celebrated? Uh, all right, so now, Based on that, our identity and our experiences, that shapes who we are, right? Even just you, you were sharing about how your experience in private school influenced you to want to impact public education so that they could, no, no matter where a child is, they can uh, um, acquire that kind of education. So um, again, there's that core of those experiences that really shape us. Um, and influence the impact that we want to make. So for me, these are some of my students from a nonprofit that I co-founded. Um, for me, my impact that I want to make is that no student, regardless of their, um, their background, their um, wealth or anything, is limited um, in their life so that they can overcome poverty, that they can have the, the wealthy, rich relationships that they, they want and, and deserve, um, but that they're not held back by anything. That's the impact that I want to make. So everything that I'm doing with this nonprofit or with Sanford Harmony or as a teacher, that's the lens that I'm looking at things through. Because um, that's the impact that I want to make. That's, that's very clearly defined for me because I've reflected on my experiences and, um, and the impact that I want to have. So I want you to turn to your buddy again and discuss what is the impact that you want to make um, with regards to your relationships, um, whether it's at work or in school, or at home or in your community. What is that big goal of how you want others around you to feel or what you want them to achieve um, in, in regards to this. So go ahead and turn and talk again. All right, we'll bring you back. All right. I, um, 
I love, I love this content because I think it just really allows for a really rich conversation. I've done this presentation in um, groups where it's like 100 people plus. And bringing people back, I will tell you, is sometimes <laughs> so hard. But people are, are um, striving to have that kind of connection and conversation with somebody. Um, I don't think some, we slow down and often enough think about these things. Especially when it comes to our personal lives, like, right, we'll have these kinds of conversations about work or something, but at work, but not, not enough about our, ourselves. Um, so this next piece is really, okay, now we, we know this impact, oh, sorry, I didn't get it here, I got to hear this conversation, but I, I want to hear from some of the others who, who shared about the impact, what is that big goal, that impact that you want to make? Or you guys could share too, but. So I, I'll talk just about that. We have taking turns on your questions, basically. Only one person gets to actually answer the question, and, then, and it's really interesting. So um, I won't do that. Uh, the impact that I want to make is um, I was very fortunate to get exposed um, through my family, through my mom. Clearly, that um, that you create everything. That everything is energy. She kind of went through this huge change in her life. We never had anything at all. We barely could fat food to eat, and pretty dysfunctional, like so many families. Um, but my mom was always just this remarkable human being, but had never gone to college, had never done anything. And about 18, she got exposed to, it doesn't really matter, it's Course of Miracles, Terry Cole Whitaker, there's a lot of things. It's the secret is basically, a whole, became a whole book and everything, right? So that concept that we create everything and everything is energy. I just saw my mom go through this amazing, and became like, a, I mean, really, it's kind of like a millionaire, like entrepreneur, built this entire empire. At, at 40 years old, but it was hmm. because someone exposed her to this, she went to this conference, and she knew there was a different way to live our life. So my point is, is that I got to see that. I was like 18 at the time, and I got to see her do this, and I literally feel that my, 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 the greatest gift that I can do is to share that with other people. Whether they believe it or not, it's about that we have a lot more control over what happens in our life than we think. Mm -hmm. so we can control everything. It doesn't mean bad stuff isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. It just means that we have a lot more control than we think if everything is connected through energy. Mm -hmm. So whatever you think about, you create. Mm -hmm. Whatever you write down, it'll be more likely to happen. All that, there's a thousand books about it, by the way. <laughs> like a thousand. No matter what, who your God is, it's not a religion thing. Mm -hmm. It's about energy. And so I feel super fortunate and grateful to have seen, got to firsthand see someone do that. And I feel that that's my impact is I try to do it through teams. I've always led high performing teams with all these education companies. Super grateful to be able to do that. Um, but if I get to give them this too, if it helps the company, awesome. Because it's all, they've always been great companies with great missions like Sanford Harmony, if it does that. But if it also gets to impact their life in a way or their kids, and they feel they have more control, and they can use that energy and that vision and setting those goals in a positive way. I just feel really fortunate to share that. So that was probably way longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> I could not figure out a way to say that more succinctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I talk really fast. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, no, but for, so for this next piece, then once we know that impact that we want to make, thinking and looking in our lives, what's the opportunity for us to really make that happen? Really bring it into fruition fully. Cool, thanks. Um, so I have actually, when it comes to in the, the work that we do in education around social emotional learning, you know, we see, we see and we hear all these things. I probably missed like a lot of the big topics that people are talking about right now. Um, but social emotional learning, restorative practices, PBIS, building equity, trauma-informed care. There's all of these um, things that are happening right now in education that's really exciting about really um, restoring relationships, um, developing one's own skills and competencies around social emotional learning, self-management, self-awareness, all of these um, great things happening. And so what is our opportunity? What is your opportunity really right now to um, really drive that home and, and make your impact that you just shared with your buddy really, uh, your buddy, <laughs> um, really happen? So um, 
I'd like, th this will be the last one, and maybe we can just do this whole group. Um, but I'd like to hear your thoughts around what do you see yourself doing as the leader of SEL at your school or with Castle or um, at University of Hawaii, whatever it may be, to really make whatever that impact was, that big goal that you have, happen. This work keeps falling in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I have to do is make, my, is make myself ready and, uh, mm. and so that I can maybe rise to the level of, of what's coming to me, mm. I guess. Like, so becoming the SEL coordinator, before it happened, I was like, ooh, I would love to be in charge of that. But, you know, like, I didn't chase it. I didn't necessarily put myself out there in any way other than what I was bringing to my classroom and the conversations that I was having. And the next thing you know, they're asking me, would you like to have this position? Oh, well, sure, yes, of course. I will. So, Can I ask you, what was the impact that you shared that you really wanted to make? Um, it, what I was telling him is that it, it goes back to what you're saying about when you walk into a room is, is I just want everyone that I have an impact on, whether it be students, colleagues, who are friends, my family is that I want to bring that sense of compassion and empathy mm. and that what's possible in a relationship and to be open and understanding and you know and that it's a constant um, I didn't add this but it's a constant road it's a constant path mm -hmm. that we never stop traveling down I will never be that perfect human being where I don't need to do this kind of uh, social emotional work developing my own social emotional intelligence there's always work to mm -hmm. do within myself and then I want to be able to just share that with others that uh, it's important. Well you must be living that impact if all these opportunities keep yeah. falling in your lap because that's how it really should happen. To your point ab about energy, it's, it's really kind of a similar thing. If you are living that impact out day in day out, then these opportunities are going to find you. I feel that way about being with Sanford Harmony. It's, um, but yeah. Um, I do want to sp just s spend the last five minutes that we have just talking about a special opportunity with Sanford Harmony um, and just giving you a brief understanding of what this program is and how it can support you with um, developing that impact in when it comes to relationships and building relationships in your school and work environment. Um, so real quick, as I mentioned, Sanford Harmony is a Castle Select program. Um, Castle, if if you want to share a bit, but Castle is a kind of the clearinghouse almost, if you will, of um, social emotional learning programs and um, really kind of the leading the direction of SEL in schools and in states across the country. Um, and S Select is their highest level for programs. So um, again, I mentioned it's a program pre-K through sixth grade. It's provided at absolutely no cost. It's training, materials, everything completely at no cost, thanks to a philanthropist who has donated um, $170 million to the organization. Um, and then there are strategies. There's Buddy Up, which is intentionally pairing two students together for a week or maybe two weeks um, together, doing some of these conversations and activities that are um, in front of you. And by the end of the school year, every student should have cycled through and worked um, in that kind of close, intimate setting with these kinds of activities by the end of the year. The second is meet up, and that's when you get together in a circle and um, you go through a four-step process of greeting each other, sharing and responding. You do a community check-in with your Harmony goals and problem solve any kind of conflicts that are happening. And then you do a fun community builder activity. And then the quick connection cards, these come with every kit. Um, they're kind of all laid out. There are conversations, collaborations, community builders, um, all together almost 400 of these quick activities that you can do with your students. Um, there's lower grade ones and upper grade ones, so they're age appropriate. Um, and so that's really one piece that I just mentioned, those everyday practices, the really quick, real simple, very easy to implement, but high, have high impact as well. And then in addition to that, there's the stories, lessons, act, and activities. So um, that's more for the more explicit instruction of the, the SEL competencies. 
Um, in our units, there's five themes, and I'll go through them because they're kind of small up there. There's diversity and inclusion, empathy and critical thinking, communication, problem solving, and peer relationships. So in pre-K through second grade, they do that through these storybooks. And in third grade through sixth grade, they do that through these different kinds of games and role playing and stuff like that. Um, it is evidence-based and um, there it shows, I think it's on this next slide. Yep. There it shows, the evidence shows strong increase in academic achievement, school enjoyment, and empathy, and decreases in stereotyping, bullying, and aggression. And this was research done specifically on Sanford Harmony, but if you do really any um, research in the field of social emotional learning, we see across the board that having an emphasis and opportunities in your school and your classrooms to develop um, social emotional learning competencies and relationships, there is a high return on your investment. Um, the castle wheel. <laughs> so, um, Again, with Choosing Harmony, it's a castle select program, donor-based, evidence-based, proven results, flexible, fun and engaging. We did, um, Johns Hopkins University did a study and there was a quote where one of the kids were interviewed and they said, we love Harmony cards and like they're very uh, familiar with it and they just love doing it. It's a fun thing that they get to do that creates those results you're looking for in your classroom as well. Um, we, support with training and support. We have an implementation roadmap to help guide you in the implementation. And to end, <laughs> this is actually one of the buddy up cards as well. It's taking selfies with your, with your buddy. So if you could go ahead and just uh, take a selfie, you don't have to post it on social media, but if you go ahead, memorialize this experience in this session today and take a buddy with your, a picture with your partner. All right, well, that is it. Thank you all so much for coming. I know it was a small group, but it kind of made for a nice little setting for us yes. to really, yeah, time <laughs> to talk about things. <laughs>